Hey guys, welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about this really beautiful commercial I did for Bon Bonite, which is an awesome brand that specializes on female shoes. So we are going to be doing, um, I'm going to be showing you a breakdown of how to build this kind of liquid. Um, let's very quickly take a look. Uh, this is the long version and this is the short version. Let's just check out the short version and then you guys can go in and, and visualize the longer version as well. So as you can see we are essentially working on generating this art directable, very art directable fluid simulation. So you're going to be learning how to control liquids, how to drive them, how to place them in specific parts, how to make them grow in specific ways on your scene. Um, this is basically a tutorial that's going to give you all those little tips. As you can see, the, the liquid actually has noise on it and has procedural textures that don't slip. They actually stick to the geometry. You can see it, you can see it here as a very clear example. Um, we are not going to be talking about the making of textures specifically. Uh, we can talk about that on part two, but on part one we'll cover everything you need to know about how this was built. So jumping into Houdini, we have this scene and this is part of the liquid and what we have. Um, so this is the brand's logo which is built right here. Um, so all I'm doing on this part, let me just set up the scene so it's easier to view. <coughs> I am bringing in the logo. Let me make, uh, hide other objects. Like that. Then simple poly extrude, VDV from polygons, smoothing the VDVs and then transforming it to place it in, in the perfect place on the scene and then that's how I got the logo. Now they wanted this to be a pin which is essentially what they have on their on their clothes. So I just built the circles, just gave it like a little bit of a beveling setup using VDVs and then I used VDVs again so that like so this edge isn't sharp. So we go through another process of VDVs, VDV conversion and we end up with something that looks like this. Um, now if we look at their brand, this basically matches the pin that they used on on a lot of their clothing. Let me see if I can find an example. Oh, here it is. So as you can see, it's just this little pin, and just the the brand wanted it to be fully golden on the commercial. Um, so that pin is basically built in real life to have this bebbling system. So this matches exact look of their piece. All right, um, and then I created the material and the out. Right uh, on the real live ver on the real commercial, I cached this to disk just because it was much higher resolution than what we're seeing right now. So I am creating another piece here, and I am bringing it in on this other on the, on this other network, which is where the magic happens. So this piece right here, that's where everything is happening right now, and this is what's happening. This is what you want to learn, and this is what you want to recreate to cre to create this kind of effect. So we have a line. This line just has a couple points. Actually, two points. <laughs> All right, let me just pull this up. We have two points, and we have a length value that it's being animated. So as you can see, the animation is taking place from frame 40 to frame 130. And then we have another line right here 
which has gone through a resample. As you can see, it has quite a lot of points. If we middle click, you'll see it starts with two points, but I'm resampling it to 875. Then I am applying noise to it. Then we're using a wrangle to create a piece kill um, channel ramp of the size. Multiply by the curve U. Setting the normals up. The shape of the lines noise. And we'll cover this in deeper example in a second. I just want to show you guys what it's actually doing. This is the result. So when we hit when we do this, this is what's happening. Okay, so what what is this? Let me show you guys. This line that is being copied and resampled applies the noise to this. So as you can see it controls the amount of squiggly lines and let me just show you in here so the kind of drips that we're getting this is what we're controlling here. So if the client wants it to be super detailed, they might come to us and say, hey, I want it to be like, whoa, like that. Then we've got the setup. Oh, or I want it to be like sharper, like fingers. So this is the kind of feedback that you're gonna get with clients when working in Houdini and creating detailed um, liquids. Or they say, hey, I want it to be really flat, or I want the, this drills to be just two of them, right? So this is, what's fun about setting things up like this because you can control the intensity here based on the noise you can control the roughness the attenuation turbulence and you get you get the idea right so Right here, we are controlling the P scale based on the channel ramp. We have additional controls over the normals, which is essentially telling my normals which direction they're facing. And we'll, we'll talk more about why the normals are facing like that further down the chain. And then you can see here that this line's noise here is basically controlling you'll see this part here so if I were to move this So this is what's controlling how far out they are going. So here they're going really far out. Here they're not going that far out. And then we have a minimum and a maximum value for them to actually go out. And of course the roughness and, and all of that. See that? So setting this up from scratch, we have the line we have the resampling, we have our noise, that if we go into here, this is just simply our position being plugged into a turbulence, then we are grabbing this float value and plugging that into our first input of a float to a vector, right? So now we're turning this vector into and adding it into our adding it to our current position which is basically how you apply noise in Houdini so this right here is just a simple noise 
then if you add a wrangle and a p-scale and you make the channel ramp the the tramp function which we've applied before which is let me show you guys once one more time from scratch how that works so we have the p-scale the tramp and the size curve u multiplied by five okay so p-scale Tramp size curve u is equal to tramp so I've just on a on a on a different keyboard that I usually work with and it's in Spanish. So it's usually just really hard to okay to get it to work and then you want to hit this right here and then I'm grabbing these values I'm moving them like that so you can't actually see it here but if we plug it in and we come into a copy here's where we can actually see what's happening so as default I had it like that but I'm inverting it so that it's coming like that Okay. Um, let's plug this back here. So we know we have a p value right here, and then we know we have the curve view value, uh, and we've also got the p. My lines noise, which is the position plugged into the turbulence. Then we have a fit range. We are middle clicking on promoting the destination mean and the destination max. We're bind importing the p scale and we are multiplying the turbulence's minimum and maximum value on our p scale and outputting that on our p scale value. So let's elaborate on this. We're grabbing the position, I'm plugging that into a turbulent noise, right? And then we're setting that as our value and we're exporting the, the D mean and the D max. And then those are being multiplied by our P scale. And then that way we can control how the noise is being applied when the animation takes place. See that way it starts like flat and it kind of increases. The size of our drills increase. Okay, so now we want to set up our UVs. To set up the UVs, I'm using a time shift. I'm freezing this on one of our last frames, 130. Um, and then using a UV project and copying the attributes, our UV attributes, onto our orgi original piece. So what that is doing, it's, it's grabbing, we hit, uh, space bar and five you see that our UVs are perfectly mapped and they follow the shape here and then the thought the idea is that the idea will be if we set this this number right here to be at a earlier version before before our animation has taken place
sorry guys, just setting this up properly. Um, so if we set this this value to be at a longer than like later, then this has already grown quite a bit more. So if it has grown more and we set the UVs to be that, then it's not gonna have too much stretching of the UVs. So what does that mean? If we set this, let me just sketch it out. So if we set our our time shift value to be, for example, in frame 150, then that means that if this thing, if this value here is 150, then our UBs are going to be set flat to be that that length. But if we set this to be full length, I'd say. Uh, 130 then when the when the animation shrinks meaning when our our goo is not here it's here then this stretching is this is gonna shrink too and this one's gonna shrink too so since at a 150 it's longer then our UV maps are gonna be feeling like they like they sh they shrink more here. You know, there there is more information on our UV plane uh, to be kind of shrunken down. And then when it stretches out, this one it's gonna be pulled out a little bit. So you're gonna get that stretchiness you're gonna get that stretching as on say you have little points like this you're gonna have them stretch a little so that's what makes the textures feel like they goo a little bit so that's how you can control it based on this time shift here the more the value that you give it more then it's gonna feel more exaggerated when it's down here but then when it fully stretches then you're not gonna get as much stretching as Okay, then we're resampling this, transforming it so that we can place it in the right place that I wanted it to be on the scene. So if we do a ghost, you'll see that I'm placing it like basically on top of where the logo is. Then I'm bending it. Just tweaked my bending so that it kind of follows follows sort of the 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 shape right and then we're using a ray and then ray is what is going to make it um, adhere adhere to the surface perfectly so the ray up works with us bringing in our geometry. So I'm referencing our geometry from what we saw at the beginning from the logo main. And then I am using this ray to um, make it adhere to the surface so if you plug in this right here ray points or primitives and then here the collision primitive which is our geometry and then and then you can set the ray direction the ray direction is going to control kind of like the way that either it's going to adhere to the surface all right